Hey Run Junkies, welcome to Runners Without Limits TV. This may become a new series called I Tried because today I'm gonna take you through a workout, a run, a threshold test that will help you determine race paces. So stick around, please like and subscribe. We are talking numbers on a whiteboard today. <laughs> Okay, this is the Enhanced Anaerobic Threshold Test, or EAT. Now, a couple of quick details about this particular run. It was developed by Coach Mary Catherine Fleming. She was one of my former coaches that got me into heart rate training to begin with. Now, I will leave links to Coach Mary Catherine Fleming and the Her Fitness Protection Program website in the description below. I hope you check her out, because she's really great at explaining why all of this stuff works and the heart rate training method. Now, in case you're new here, first of all, thank you for joining me. And let me tell you a little bit about me as a runner and my athletic background. I've been running exclusively for about 13 years. I had some triathlon experience as well. And I have been running by heart rate for the last three or four years. I'm in my late 40s, so I'm starting to notice a little bit of slowdown. However, I have set three of my four PRs in the last two years. You will find me more often than not in the middle of a pack in any given race. And I'm currently training for a three-day virtual challenge that includes a 5K, 10K, and half marathon. The Enhanced Anaerobic Threshold Test is heart rate based, and Coach MK uses heart rate data almost exclusively in her training. So if you're gonna do this test, a heart rate monitor is required. Okay, so a couple of quick things before we actually get into the workout itself. Before you even start this 10 minute warm up, there is some foam rolling and dynamic warm ups that you wanna get done before you even start walking and or running. This warm up is 10 minutes long at 140 beats per minute or lower. Once you've done that, you will do six by 50 meter accelerators. That's where you're going a little faster and then back down to an easy jog across that 50 meters. Then this is where the test starts. So we do the first 2K at 160 to 169 beats per minute. This is the range we wanna stay in for that entire 2K. The second 2K, we're gonna get up to 170 to 176 beats per minute. The third 2K at over 180 beats per minute. So there's no break in between these. You just keep going faster to get into these ranges. Once you finish that last 2K, you cool down as needed, 10 to 15 minutes or so. Now this workout is tough and it really should be done well rested and where I have seen it in my training plan is the day after a rest day. Try to get a good night's sleep the night before, eat well, hydrate, be well rested, do your foam rolling and warm, stretching warm ups before you head out. We are gonna crunch some numbers, so I gotta get rid of this. This is the information I got from the speed test itself. So in the first 2K, that 160 to 169 beats per minute, average mile pace of 1034. Second 2K at 170 to 176 beats per minute came in at an average mile pace of 1022. And that last 2K, when I'm telling my legs to shut up, they're fine, uh, at 180 beats plus per minute, uh, I come in at an average pace of 1010. All of the information here will help us determine race paces going forward. So let's start looking at these numbers. This last one can be called my new 5K predicted race pace. So at 5K at 1010 average pace, that comes up to a 3137 predicted finish time. If we work backward, this 2K, that second one, is my new 10K predicted pace and a predicted finish time of 1.04.22. For my half marathon time, I am taking this 2K average pace and adding 30 seconds to give me 11.04, which would give me a predicted finish time of 2.25. Oh, five. So now looking at the full marathon, I would take, again, this first 2K average pace and add 60 seconds, which would give me 11.34, which would give me about a 504, right? Or 503.16, right? Yeah, 
have to look at that. Okay, so basically using this data, you can find predicted times for all four of the common distances just based on this data. However, I can tell you that these three times I have seen faster, much faster than these times in the last two years. I haven't done a marathon in six years. So I'm going to assume that this is fairly accurate. Coach MK in this enhanced aerobic threshold calculation and analysis, she allows for a different guideline if you have indeed seen faster than these paces recently. So the second calculation for the half marathon is taking the average of the first two 2Ks. That comes out to 10 minutes and 28 seconds per mile average. You take that 20, 10, 28 and subtract 15 seconds. So for those purposes, that's the average of these two minus 15 seconds. That gives me a new half marathon time of 10, 13. Now this average pace is really close to the PR that I had at the half marathon two years ago. So I'm kind of feeling like I could use this. If I really worked hard, I could use this as a half marathon goal race pace. Now for the purposes of illustration, I want to come down to this marathon race pace. You do the same thing. You take the average of the first two 2Ks and you just use that. It's that 1028 average pace. What that gives me is a 434-ish marathon time. I mean, we're, we're talking a difference of 30 minutes here. Okay, that's a lot. That's more than a minute faster per Now I will say that my PR in the marathon is 444. However, I haven't done that in a long time. So I'm not so sure about this particular time. I'm guessing that if I were to do a marathon for time, it would kind of fall between these. So now that we have all of this data, we can plan ahead for the rest of our training, right? Really, the biggest number that I like looking at is this 10K number. You will see a lot of resources will tell you that this 10K race pace is good for tempo miles, it's good for longer intervals. So this 1022 is something that I'm gonna be using going forward in this particular training plan. And then this half marathon race pace, since I am training for a half marathon, I'm not training for time, so I may use this 1104 because I'm not actually training for time. If I really wanted to push myself, I might do a range or average this 11.04 and 10.13. But right now, this is really good information to start. I now don't have to worry about pushing myself too hard and trying to hit paces that are unrealistic or I might not be pushing myself hard enough because I'm underestimating myself. So now I have data. This is the kind of information that I love to have going forward. Now, Jen and I over on the Runners Without Limits podcast recently talked about a variety of different tests that you can do to test yourself in your training. Yasso 800s, Galloway's Magic Mile, uh, you can do a 5k test. There are all sorts of ways that you can test yourself. And I'm going to leave a link to that podcast in the description. Bottom below. line, is this a good data set? Yes. Is this a good way to test yourself? Yes. Do I recommend it? Yes. If you train by heart rate, if you don't train by heart rate or don't use that regularly, this may not give you a very accurate picture because you haven't been following that data point for across time. If you run by the Galloway method, for example, it's not to say that you shouldn't test yourself. This is just not a good test for you because that walk interval will always bring your heart rate back down. You will always have that recovery walk where this is supposed to be sustained effort at that heart rate. Really so awesome. yes, if you use heart rate as a data point for your training, this is a great way to go. But what do you think? I know this is a lot of information, but I hope what you get out of it is that this is a good test. It's a solid way to test yourself and see where you so are. So what do you think? Have you ever tried the enhanced anaerobic threshold test? And if so, how did it go for you? If not, what is your favorite way to test yourself? Please leave thoughts, questions, comments, and suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. Hit that like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Until then, remember you have no limits. Thanks for watching. Happy running.